Hello, my name is Joaquin Silva. I'm Elise Dalfrey. I'm Lin Huang. My name is Huang Ho. My name is David Quintanilla. And I'm Carlos Soriano. So this project is for thermal design. Uh, we'll be discussing problem 8.2D. And uh, our topic is uh, winter storm Yuri and the effect on Texas, where we identify major electrical power failure that recently occurred in our locale. We will discuss the circumstances associated with the failure and the steps taken to avoid the event in the future. Uh, again, we will discuss winter storm Yuri, which occurred in Texas in February of 2021. So what is ERCOT? In Texas, there is an organization called the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. It is a nonprofit corporation that manages the state's power. It is re responsible for overseeing and managing energy companies within Texas to ensure that the power grid is stable. As the state's energy demand decreases, ERCOT will shut down the plant so that they can run it at a lower capacity. ERCOT is not connected to any outside grids, meaning that it is totally independent in its energy production. ERCOT must therefore schedule how much power will be distributed through a system called power dispatch. On ERCOT's website, a live view of energy reserves and energy demand is available for view, as shown in the figure. Some of the drawbacks of ERCOT are that, as mentioned before, it is not connected to any outside grids. It is entirely self-sufficient within the state. So should a situation arise where the demand is higher than the output, it cannot receive energy from other states. However, it can still send power through its respective sec uh, sections, as shown in the figure. If the demand exceeds pr production, then a blackout may likely occur. Normally, Texas has an issue with energy production in the summer as cooling incurs the highest loads. ERCOT must prepare for the energy needs of high temperatures to prevent any faults or overloads in the system. A wide area interconnection, which is a technical term for a power grid, is how we deal with the volatility of supply and demand. Since there is no real feasible methods to store large quantities of energy, of electricity, therefore supply and demand must be matched simultaneously. In other words, electricity is produced, transmitted, and consumed at the same time. Texas has many methods uh, to create energy. According to ERCOT, almost 50% of Texas energy comes from natural gas. In cold temperatures, these gas lines contain water vapor and combined with hydrates, which solidify uh, well above freezing temperatures. In addition, wind turbines, the second largest source of energy, were frozen all across the state during the storm. Next slide. To give a little more insight on the severity of the storm, most cities in Texas broke records for all time lowest temperatures recorded. The storm lasted 10 days with areas seeing temperatures up to 25 degrees lower than their yearly norm. The storm is still being investigated, but it could be the most costliest Texas weather disaster in history and is recorded as the first billion dollar disaster of 2021. The increased failure occurred when the power generation machines were exposed to record cold temperatures. The power infrastructure was not prepared in the sense that there was a lack of winterization that, of, that other northern states performed before a winter storm. Natural gas pumps were also shut off due to the pumps running on electric power. Since electric power was cut off, the pumps could not run, further increasing the demands on other sources of energy. This added further staining, straining the other power generation sources also being used by the population to stay warm in the cold weather. Next, please. Um, for the effect on Texas, after a card performed an analysis on the cause of the failures, it was found that the budget intended to winterize the generators was used on a voluntary basis. Her cost resources were recommended and incentivized to use the organization's budgets for renewable energy resources. It was also found that just prior to the freeze in November 2020, the contract with an oversight committee, which is Texas reliability entity was end. This oversight committee was focused on the reliability of the grid and would challenge decisions made about the repair budgets and efforts towards reliability. Without oversight of 
air of ERCOT decision is create a conflict where the best interests of the users were not in mind. The combination of the disabled power generation equipment along with the extreme demand for gas and electric heat from the resident of Texas create a constantly worsening scenario. As a coal forced resident to turn off the heat in the house and boil water, the demand on electricity and natural gas rose. Without the full capacity of the power infrastructure, the system was strained, causing brownouts in many areas of, the te of Texas. This forced ERCOT to create a controlled rolling blackout, where they would shut off power to sections of the grid so some people were able to have usable power instead of the brownout. This would continue for days at the linemen and power engineers would work to restore the infrastructure and the temperature increase. Um, a temperature this low is very rare for Texas. The house and businesses are made to give off as much heat as possible during the summer to keep the home as cool as possible. This lack of insulation is not ideal for keeping the heat of the home. Since the water pipes of many homes are not insulated properly for temperature this low, the houses are not retaining heat. With the added complication of no gas or electricity to keep the home warm, the water pipes were exposed to the cold. When water freezes, it expands. Since many home and businesses, business owners were not aware that they would leave a tape open and dripping to give the water some room to expand, many people experienced frozen and bursting pipes. Without a way or knowledge of how to shut off the flowing water, the pipes continue to gush out water. Since this was a uh, systematic issue all over many cities, this lowered the water pressure of the water supply lines. This issue was coupled by the fact that many of the water pumps ran on electricity, which was also short in supply. Firefighters struggled to get a strong supply of water in many areas, and the slack of pressure meant that many citizens far from the supply lines were getting no water at all from their tape. The water flowing into streets also caused minor flooding, and this water immediately froze in the deep temperatures. The cold temperatures and lack of heat in homes result in many people becoming ill or dying of hypothermia. The lack of water pressure caused homes to burn down due to water to put the fire out. The ice on the roads caused accidents. People uneducated about dangers of carbon monoxide tried to stay warm inside the cars or they got ours poisoning themselves. The Texas Department of State um, reported the total loss of life for 210 people. Next, please. Moving on to possible solutions. Uh, the first one and most practical would be the winterization of the Texas grid. As previously mentioned, the power plants fell due to freezing. And as you can see on the figure on the right, the top one, the most common energy source that failed was natural gas. And winterization is weatherproofing the electricity plants to withstand low temperatures. Is if you look at the figure on the bottom there, that's a typical gas uh, power plant in Texas where it's exposed to the outside. And the reason for that is that during the summer, um, due to the heat, most power plants are more concerned with keeping the plant cool enough because typically winters don't tend to be as cold, um, so they don't have a lot of insulation. So the winterizing of gas power plants is basically that, just adding insulation and heating elements to prevent components from freezing. And there is three critical components, those being water, gas, and air. Next slide, please. Starting off with water, the water is used to turn into steam, which spins the turbines, which creates the electricity, and it runs through pipes. So to winterize the water, um, insulation could be added as well as heating cables, as seen on the first picture there on the right. Moving on to air, the air is used to combust the natural gas, and 
air has humidity in it and when this humidity accumulates or it's too high instead of a pipe and the temperature is below freezing the humidity can turn into ice which can clog different components like valves actuators and pipes so to prevent this from happening um, more humidity sensors could be added to components like compressors to make sure that whenever the air is pumped into the power plant um, the humidity is not going to cause the uh, different components to clog um, and in case the humidity is too high then insulation or heating elements could be added so even if the humidity is too high this will prevent it from freezing and therefore it won't clog Finally, there is gas. Gas is the power source for the power plant. Um, as previously mentioned, gas has some impurities which can cause it to clog even above freezing temperature. And most of the gas either comes directly from the source or uh, some other natural gas uh, source, um, which means it runs through pipes. So to prevent the, the pipes from clogging, um, the in, the purity of the glass of the gas could be improved, so there is no risk that the uh, pipes would clog due to the impurities. Insulation and heating elements could also be added. To weatherize the infrastructure, the power generation companies power plants do need a huge amount of natural gas from other companies. During the Uri Texas windstorm and um, months uh, after that, the oil and gas price keep high due to high demand and insufficient uh, amount of supply due to pandemic. However, in September this year, the Texas uh, state senator demanded a weatherized the natural gas industry, plus the increased supply from OPEC and non-OPEC producer, and the uptick in COVID case, and uh, releasing 50 million barrels from the petroleum reserve to help the lack of supply and reduce the uh, pressure on the oil price around the country. Next, please. So the next possible solution would be the power grid integration. So as previously mentioned, the Texas grid is completely independent, which means it must provide its own energy demand. In case this demand cannot be met, uh, the grid needs to shed some load because if the demand is too high and the supply is not enough, then the frequency of the whole grid could uh, get low enough that can cause the whole Texas grid to completely fail. Um, and that would take months, if not years, for the Texas grid to come back. Um, and the grand scale of the West and East grid, as you can see there on the figure, it's significantly bigger than the Texas grid. Um, it's been described as the biggest machine built by humans. Um, and due to the scale of these grids, they are extremely robust. In case there is a, a location in which demand cannot be met by local power plants, the electricity can be directed across states and even Canada to where it's needed to make sure that there is always a electricity uh, supply. So if Texas was integrated into one of these grids, um, then the events that happened would, wouldn't have occurred. Um, for example, in Oklahoma, there was similar freezing condition, but there was no significant blackouts as compared to Texas, just because Oklahoma was able to obtain its electricity from other states which had uh, winterized power plants. This is unlikely to occur in Texas, though, uh, due to political opposition. For emergency power stores, Investing in lithium-ion battery banks is another solution. Um, ERCOT should consider investing in a backup plan in the event that all other measures are not sufficient to meet the spontaneous demands of the grid, as well as infrastructure malfunctions similar to what happened during the freeze. 
Tesla is now offering such a system in the form of an install package that can be integrated into existing power grid. Their mega pack offering can offering can be charged with existing fossil fuels or connected to renewable energy generation systems to offer a scalable supply of emergency power. During Texas freeze, the natural gas picker power plants went into top gear to make up the supply loss by the malfunction equipment. By consuming so much natural gas, the overall pressure of natural gas is in the supply decrease, which limited the heat output available to the coal citizens of Texas. By burning natural gas, many pollutants were released to the atmosphere. With the product like Tesla Megapack integrated into the grid, these peaker power plants can be used as the last resource and continue to be used within normal levels until the Megapack is drained. If the Megapack system was charged with renewable energy, this cycle can happen daily in the event of the emergency and hopefully prevent brownouts, blackouts, hypotonia, and loss of life. Next, please. The first major winter storm bill approved by the Texas legislature was House Bill 16, which bans residential wholesale electricity plants. Wholesale electricity is paid for by a market participant that purchases electricity in bulk from the wholesale market. It is much cheaper than what the average Texas resident pays. Those plans include the kind that caused February power bills to skyrocket for most customers. Some customers reported bills of over $15,000. One of the wholesale companies responsible for the high prices is Gritty Energy. When the rates skyrocketed during the winter storm, the state grid operators raised wholesale prices to 9,000 per megawatt per hour, which Gritty Energy charged customers. The House advanced a $2.5 billion plan to bail out Texas' distressed electricity market from the financial crisis stemming from the winter storm. The plan would impose a fee on electricity companies, which would then get passed on to residential and business con customers in their power bills. An enforcement mechanism and clear weatherization standards were put into place in order to have impact. Next slide. Winter storm Yuri affected power infrastructure, which was not prepared due to a lack of winterization, power source diversification, power grid integration, and power emergency power storage. Winterization refers to weatherproofing electrical plants so they can withstand extreme cold. One of the leading causes of the grid failure was the lower operating capacities of power plants due to the cold. Power source diversification includes natural gas, coal, solar, wind, and hydro as an alternative to just one means of power. Power grid integration includes the integration of east, west, and Texas grids, which would allow winterization power plants, which can keep up with increased demands during the cold. Emergency power storage would include ERCOT investing in a backup plan in the event that all other measures are not sufficient to meet the demands of the grid. Overall, Group 3 found the damages the storm caused, the reasons behind, and what steps should have been taken to avoid the event from happening again in the future. Next slide would be our references.